All right, so I am trying to do an emoji for the outsiders and using this emoji maker, instead I've created kind of a, a portrait of Commissioner Gordon. But I will make it into what I want by using some of the principles here in the next phase. And you can always look ahead and see what we're going to be doing with this simple icon we've made by rebuilding it using vector shape tools. It's a little confusing because we're going to use the vector shape tools that are in Photoshop or in this example in Photo P, but we're limited to only using those vector shapes. Just like we are limited in the first exercise not to create our own pixels. Here we have to create our image out of only shapes. But we can modify those shapes with transform, we can warp them, and then we can add effects to them, right? So that ultimately we rebuild what we want, just inspired by what we're creating on this website. So in order to uh, work from this, I need to make sure I save it. And so this is to show you that these are vectors, right? You can download a PNG, which is a raster file that supports transparency. You can download an SVG, which you can see on our topics for midterm file formats to know for the um, midterm. But that stands, stands for Scalable Vector Graphic. But you can also, let me get out of this somehow. You can also just do a screen grab of it. Ah, I'm not sure if I can get back and do a screen grab, but you can. So if I go to my downloads folder, I'll see those two options. One of them is a raster format. That is the PNG. I'm going to drag that into my exercise two folder. One of them is the vector format, that is the SVG. This is the easiest way I can think of to just show you the difference between the two. We just created this thing. Let's see what these two file formats, how they compare. So if you just double click, you'll open one of them in, you'll open both of them in preview, which is just Mac's version of Windows Media Viewer except you can't open an SVG with preview. So when you click on your SVG, it's going to open up Illustrator. So this is the PNG and notice that those shapes are just made of pixels. They're pretty rough looking because this isn't high resolution. It's just screen resolution. But when we look at it as a vector, it's kind of out of order, which is interesting. But we zoom in, and those shapes are perfectly clean, no matter how much we zoom in. And you can see the little blue line that's around them that's showing us the edge of the vector. If we open up the layers, we can actually see all the paths. They're just in kind of a weird order, which is interesting. And that's why we're not going to work within Illustrator right now. Instead, we're going to do this all in Photoshop and recreate these shapes for ourselves using shape tools. We'll be using Illustrator a little later in the semester and create our own logos once we've gotten more comfort with compositing and understanding how to use layers. But you can see how Illustrator is just layering up these shapes just like you, like you did in that emoji maker. The difference is we then have control of each shape and we can transform it like we were doing with our com compositing images. Whee. It's easy to make a laughing animation. OK. So you can download the SVG, but we're actually not going to be using that. Instead, we're going to start with this next class. We're going to open this in Photoshop. And then we're going to turn it into a resolution that makes sense. So first, I might look at its image size right now. And it's only 4.4 inches by 72 pixels per inch screen resolution. And what I can do is change that to be 350 
my lab resolution by eight inches by eight inches and let it resample, which means the computer is going to make up the pixels. When it does that, it will make them look pretty wonky, but this is just a guideline for us. Then I'm going to go to image canvas size. I'll repeat this next class. And I want it to be at least 8 by 10 by 300, right? You can always go over that. So I'm going to do it 12 by 12 inches canvas size. This is the paper around my emoji so I can grow beyond just that circle. And so now I have 12 by 12 inches by 350. And then what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to do what's called onion skinning this, taking its opacity down to 50% so that I can build shapes on top of it. And to do that, I use the vector shape tool. We'll be doing this all through next class, but if you want to get started, the shape tools in Photoshop are under near the bottom. This is where some of the more specialized tools, they're right above the hand. And the one on top is just the line tool, which we're not going to use. Instead, we're going to use the rectangle tool, the ellipse tool, the triangle tool, the polygon tool, and the custom shape tool, right? So obviously the basic shape I have is a circle. So I'm going to use the ellipse tool. And I'm going to use, you see that that nice blue outline that shows me, kind of signifies it as a vector shape. I can hold down shift to make it a perfect circle. And then it's going to fill in with a color. That color is called its property. To change that color, I can double click it and then use the color selector. I can even steal it from another image, right? But I'm just going to do something basic right now and make it kind of a, a slightly faded white, whitish yellow. Okay, then I can use the move tool just like we did with our layers and kind of move it into place. And now I've started with the vector shape. And notice like a smart object, when you bring it in, it has a little icon in it, which means that this is a special type of layer. This is a vector. It's not pixel based. What's another circle I can use? So I can do that again and I can make an eye. And we'll learn how to, to play with layer order and transparency and to play with the properties. But one thing you should know is when you make a vector shape, it has two properties. It has a fill and it has an outline. So notice that my yellow circle, once I've clicked off the layer, now has a black outline. That's called a stroke. And on the stroke, I can set that to be empty with the red line through it. Or I can set it to be a different color. And I can set it to be a different thickness. So vectors give us a lot of kind of non-intuitive options, but I'm just going to turn off the stroke so it's just like I'm layering up colored paper. And then just finally, before I end this video, I'll add a little pupil in that eye, and I'll just let that be black. And then I'm going to layer that on top. Notice every time you make a new vector shape, if your default settings are on in Photoshop, it will automatically make a new layer. So each of these are independent vector shapes, which allows me to easily change the color, select them. And because they're vectors, I can transform them to any size and they won't ever distort. So then I need to save this file. Right? And I'm going to save it as, save as, my name, or FA number two. And I'm doing the Outsiders. So this is the Outsiders emoji demo. As a PSD to exercise two, you can just save it to your desktop, right? And then organize it into your folder. And that's where we'll pick up next class. And we will be posting these to Canvas. All right. And I'm here till two o'clock. You want to keep working with your questions either on exercise one, exercise two. I will see you guys on Wednesday. Thanks for playing. You're going to be save as your first time. So for this.
this, it's good to save to your cloud documents because you're signed in, right? And that way you can access it at home or anywhere else. You know, just always name it with your name and password. So I would usually call it FH1 because we'll keep listing on this if it's extra charge money. Then you can also save it to your computer. So then you can say file save as again. You can save it to your computer. And then just save it to your desktop. That's how you would navigate it to your system. Think of your cloud saving as backup. And that's just in case something happens to this computer, right? You're not able to log in. Something happens, you can just go into any other terminal. And as long as you can log into Photoshop with your Adobe account, they'll do something to that. So to the desktop. It's short yeah. for that is easy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe in the screen, you can just hit the menu or the desktop. I like that because then you can see it. It'll show up and then you can move it into your folder. Say, uh, oh, this is just a first idea. Put that in there. So you're going to create a folder that will keep it. And now you close this. You want to save this. And same thing, you can do both. And then we'll create a folder for you. No, that's showing what's in your cloud already. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So you can actually just plug it in. Ready to go? And there are so many different ways to do like that. Watch the, the Harley Quinn cartoon. This reminds you of the Commissioner Gordon one. <laughs> Very deep note. So now that's here. That's yep. Folder. Great. You've got a folder. So, so the folder, just like these, right? You can open it and you can move things into it. What I would do is start organizing through the folder. You can have one folder for exercise one. This is going to live in the documents. So, so it, you're not leaving things exposed on the desktop where all your students can see messy things. You can just open this up and you'll see your folder. Now, what we need is to take your PSD. This is what built your, or at least one example of what built this. You also have like the JPEG that you put on the campus. All that is somewhere. Save it. Take care. I'm first going to save it on the computer as a copy of the JPEG. And we'll keep it in this well. There it is. And then going to save it as a Photoshop file on the computer. It's already saved. Just so you have those. on this computer, should you want to go back. Okay. Now, let's see. Let's go ahead and put this stuff into it. 